So if I say right now, what's present? Let's find it. It's now. Now that is five seconds gone. What am I going to do with that? What can I do with that? Nothing. It is practically useless for me. As soon as I think I put my finger on it, it's five seconds old. I don't think we worriers ever worry about the present. I want to know what you're going to say about this sermon one half hour from now. Or the five seconds out, whether I'm going to lose my place and not be able to find it. Or I'm working from an iPad. It could turn off. I don't worry about the present. All my trust issues are in the future. For my kids, for my marriage, for my health, for my eternal destiny. Everything that challenges me is yet to happen. I picture the future as a, the future's coming this way as a river, like time is flowing. And that's future grace coming like this. And it gathers in a big reservoir called past grace with the cross as the main expression. And therefore my gratitude should be growing continually because past grace is growing. Grace is pouring over your lives, gathering in the past filling you with a sense of thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's coming at you from the front. So how does that work for helping you be a fountain of blessing in moments of conflict? How does future grace enable you, empower you, help you not to be hopeless, not to be retaliatory? So three steps, how I work through with more or less success, the application of future grace to these kinds of conflicts. Number one, above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. What does that mean? Covers it. Love has in it the resources not to coil up in anger or hopelessness or retaliation, but rather to bless. Step number two, Love gets its power from faith in future grace. In Christ Jesus, only faith working through love. None of that old ceremonial stuff counts for anything anymore, but faith which comes to active expression through love. So if love covers a multitude of sins, the root of that power is in faith. So step three is to get a clear promise to fix it in your mind and plead with the Holy Spirit that it seep down in and create hope and joy and freedom that does not need to return evil for evil. You have absolutely certain, totally undeserved future because he bought it with the blood of his son, which is infinitely precious. Therefore, my future is as certain as Jesus is valuable. Nothing can pluck me out of his hand. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Not this conflict, not anything. I'm safe.